Hey guys, welcome back to Brewing with D and Lee. Let's make some apple wine. Here, we've infused two and a quarter cups of brown sugar within our one quart of organic apple cider. Of course, we've measured the apple cider prior to adding the sugar, and we got about seven to seven and a half percent ABV, uh, according to our hydrometer. So we are going to uh, only add two and a half cups, like I said before. But if you're measuring in about six to six and a half ABV, then you wanna add three full cups of brown sugar. So here we have our half gallon of apple cider. Of course, it's organic with no preservatives. We've introduced three cinnamon sticks and four whole cloves. And right now we're simmering it for about 20 minutes. You could do up to 30 minutes in order to truly infuse the flavors. So uh, just to give a little insight as far as aroma, maybe flavor, I ducked my finger in it a little bit. It was a little hot. But this smells equivalent to what an apple pie at McDonald's smells like. So this is very cinnamony, very concentrated in flavor, very sugary. You can't go wrong, this is beautiful. All right guys, uh, so it looks like our Apple Jacks container exploded. This is all for documentation purposes. We're doing this together. Uh, it's still fermenting and the lid is open, but it is sealed by the bubbles. So, oh, okay, now it's not sealed anymore. Okay, we're trying our best to clean it and see what comes out of it. Uh, as you can see here, we have a large yeast cake on top of the jug. And right now, what I, the whole point of this clip is to show you what degassing is. So essentially, and through a lot of research, I'm making a short cut, not cut action. I'm making it short for you, okay? Degassing is when you stir it, not shaken, so complete opposite 007, 700, okay? So I'm sorry, I'm hilarious for myself. Now listen, you degass it to get rid of the carbon dioxide, the air that's already being created through the yeast, and you're getting rid of the sulfur dioxide. So essentially, carbon dioxide present in the liquid creates carbonic acid. The carbonic acid creates enough of a stress environment for the yeast that the yeast then switches from carbonic, or sorry, from carbon dioxide to sulfur dioxide in their process. And the mix of the carbonic acid from the CO2 and the sulfur dioxide that it's starting to produce creates a very fumy, fusel alcohol, no good, no go flavor. You don't want this. You know, we're making alcoholic beverages and that's fine and all, right? Only 21 and plus, if you're not 21, don't watch this video anymore. But you, don't, you wanna have a pleasure or a pleasurable experience. You do not wanna have such rocket fuel as the term goes on the web. So that being said, you go into gas. Within the first week, you do a little bit here and there. Some people say do it three times a day. Some people say do it, you know, when you go to work, if you have to go to work, still in these hard times of COVID, do it in the morning, come back from work, do it at night, whatever you gotta do. Um, I'm gonna go back, talk about the rubber band and the, and the scrunchie, right? Keep that on there, right? Because it will explode. So as long as you have there and then you, you degas in the morning and night, like I just stated, uh, you'll be totally fine. So essentially you wanna stir it. You don't wanna cause any oxyge uh, oxygenation during the fermentation that will cause off flavors and it will introduce bacteria into your brew. During fermentation is the weakest time during your brew. So of course you don't wanna introduce any oxygen. That's gonna to totally mess up the flavors. You don't want any of that. I mean, if you're gonna do that, why even brew at all, right? It's terrible, it's awful. So forget anyone who told you otherwise. So let's just get right to it. This is how you degas. I like to grab from both ends. It's the one gallon carboy, easy peasy. You get it and you give it a nice, gentle stir again 700 no 007 we don't want shaking we want stirred you're gonna let it go and you know for reference i know i'm doing a good job when the cake on the neck of the bottle comes back down and you want to keep doing this process until no more no more bubbles uh forms at the surface not necessarily about the bubbles i'd say it's more about the foam as long as there's no more foam you can see bubbles here but this is nothing within the first two three days of that intense fermentation, um, it was all over the place. I mean, the bung exploded, the foam kept rising to the top. It got so intense, and as we've learned with uh, high gravity solutions, that we had to remove the airlock, put a siphon hose in there, I mean, completely intubate it, and they put the end of the siphon into a bowl of star sand or, or sterilization or sterilized solution 
so that the air can constantly run off without any disruption or resistance from the uh, pressures that the airlock gives back with the weight of the water. And that, I mean, it was just running and running. I mean, 72 hours, I, I would come back to Lee, hi Lee, and we would time the tempo of the bubbles because it was just, it was like this with the bubbles. It ended up slowing down to like, like this. So the bubbles really wore themselves out. The yeast really wore themselves out. And uh, that's where we are today. So that's kind of like a fast forward, flashback 48 hours, come back 48 hours. That's where we're at today. So as you can see, you know, the, the foam, as we talked, right? It's a time-based activity. The foam wore out and you can still see the activity in the airlock, of course. So we're gonna give this another gentle stir, release all that carbon dioxide, let go of all that carbonic acid. You know, it might not seem like it when you're doing it, but there will always be gas left over. I mean, it's gonna keep coming from the sides, going and going and going. This little clip was just about degassing and it looks like uh, it's the end of this bag. All right, guys, so it's been about three weeks and a couple days. We have our apple wine going good for us right now. It seems to have slowed down its fermentation process to about one bubble per two minutes, minute and a half. So I think that's exactly where we want it. We don't want it to ferment out, ferment out completely because that's gonna make it too dry with, if it's already not too dry right now. Speaking of dry, it doesn't really matter, right? Because we have our handy dandy 100% apple juice concentrate. This is exactly what's gonna back sweeten our beverage and, and do exactly what we need for us today. And now that that's connected, and now that she's smiling behind the camera, we're going to disassemble all of this. So I'm going to take off the airlock. Oh boy. Mm, smells good. Okay, toss this aside. Boom, we don't need that. Take this out. Boom. We don't need that. Let's see if I can take out the boom. There we go. Beautiful. This is turning out better than I thought. So let's go ahead and give this another shot. I'm going to put the siphon straight in the bottom. Straight here. And That's the beauty with this auto side. Guys, so we moved around the liquid a little bit. Everything was looking good. And right now with the hydrometer, it's looking like it's at a 1.06 to 1.08. So about 1.07, right in between. All right guys, so let's do a quick ABV calculation. Our original gravity was 1.114. You subtract that from what you have now, which is 1.07. And we're at 0.044, and you multiply that by 131.25. So right now, this is about 5.75% alcohol. Okay, so apparently I'm not doing math very well right now. Let's do that again. So original gravity, 1.114. And it's actually not 1.07, but rather 1.007 is gone. So 1.007. So we're at 0 0.107. And of course you multiply that by 131.25 and we are at 14% alcohol. Not bad, that's the exact range we want from our apple wine. Okay, so we went ahead and tried some of the wine. It is bone dry. I mean, pretend you, you're smelling isopropyl alcohol for your wounds and with a little bit of cinnamon and, and apple and flavor. It smells better than it tastes right now. Again, so right here, what we're gonna do is back sweeten it with some apple juice concentrate. Woo! That's like syrup. So, let's get right to it. So we're gonna go ahead and put all that in there. And this is gonna bring everything back to a balance from bone dry to oversweet meets us right in the middle. That's beautiful. disturb the truck too much. And then with patience, all of it will come out. All right, so we've mixed our apple wine and our apple concentrate, apple juice concentrate. Let's give it a little taste. Woo! Cheers. 
you definitely taste the alcohol. It's definitely fermented, done its job. I congratulate the yeast for doing such a good job with that. But this is gonna need some time to age really smooth over as one. So that's why we're gonna transfer from the pot into our gallon, into our bottle for the remainder that we need and let it do its thing. All right guys, so we have about a gallon of our 14% apple wine that has been back sweetened with our apple juice concentrate. It's lovely, it's a little tart right now, it's a little dry, but if you let it age for a little bit, give it some time, maybe a year, it'll get a lot smoother, or so, th so they say. But moving aside, or moving along from apple wine, if you wanted something a little stronger, let's say, hypothetically speaking, we would throw this gallon into the freezer, allow it to freeze for about two days, and then tilt it upside down into another cup. And all the alcohol and all the essences from what we have made here today would drain out, leaving only ice. And the ice would take up the whole gallon. That would concentrate all the flavor, concentrate the alcohol, and take it from 14%, maybe to 30, 35, depending on how many times you do that action, even up to 40%. And that would make it a stronger beverage. So again, that's all hypothetical. Right now we're happy with what we have right here with our apple wine and our uh, and and what we've made you know they like they say nothing tastes better than pride so we're very proud of what we've made today i want to thank all of you for coming and passing by and brewing with d and lee we've had a fun time doing this if you like this video give it a like go ahead and subscribe that helps us out a lot it gives us more inspirations and if you want us to make anything or if you've heard of anything from other people any ideas any fruits you could come up with write it down below into the comments and give us some ideas and we'll go ahead and brew that up and show you what we come up with